There are only two words you must understand inside and out to start your practice and keep it growing. Yet if you ignore these two words, you'll find your practice stabbed in the back and bleeding out in the street before you can dial 911 on your smartphone. Ask a typical marketing expert and the two words they will tell you are your customer. Ask a typical business consultant and the two words they will tell you are your mission. Ask a typical financier and the two words they will tell you are the economy. How about if I ask you, what two words do you think you must understand for your practice to live and grow? Welcome to the Doctor's Mentor Show. If you believe that medicine is an industry and not a profession, if you enjoy submitting complex reimbursement claims, or you would do another residency just for fun, be advised, you're about to be offended. You should probably leave now. All this talk about mentoring doctors is ridiculous. I thought doctors learned to do everything better than everyone else the first year of medical school. At least that's the way they act. If you love assisting patients with vitality breakthroughs, if the right to practice medicine without interference is important, and you want expert tips for practice freedom and profits to support your epic life, welcome aboard and prepare to be blown away. The Doctor's Mentor Show starts now. Here's your host, Dr. Lori Barr. Now what happens if you ask the ruthlessly successful billionaires of the world, the men and the women who eat what they kill and never look back? What would these entrepreneurs and moguls from across all industries and professions tell you? What would Thomas Frist or Gary Mickelson tell you? What two words am I going to tell you? Today's topic. The two words that you must understand for your practice or any other business to survive and thrive are cash flow. The lifeblood of any business and the practice of your profession is your business is the cash flow, the money coming in and the money going out of your practice. Publishing mogul Felix Dennis states that over-optimism concerning cash flow is one of the five most common startup errors that leads to business failure. Every leader needs to understand the fundamentals of cash flow. Even if you're an employee of a major corporation or a hospital, you cannot leave the understanding of cash flow to the accounting department. One of the most important things you can learn before you start your practice is how cash flow works in your profession, in your specialty, and also within the practice setting you've chosen. While you can delegate many other business functions, monitoring and forecasting your cash flow are two things you must do yourself. So with that in mind, let's start with a few basic questions as if you're just thinking about opening your practice. So the very first question to ask is, how do I bring money into my practice? If you do not have a plan to provide services and or products that individuals will happily exchange their money to possess or experience, then you really don't have a viable business or practice. Your plan should include what products and services you will deliver, the charge for each, who will be billed, and how money will be collected, as well as a summary of the two other ways money comes into a business or practice. Those two other ways are money is borrowed, or money that's the result of investments. So the reason why how does money come into my practice is the first question is that you may need help capitalizing your practice initially. Any lender will want to have a pro forma, a plan where you demonstrate how money will be made so that you'll be able to pay a loan off within the loan terms and keep your business afloat. The factors on the revenue side of the cash flow equation are essential in building both your pro forma and your eventual business plan. The second question to ask is, how does money leave my practice? Two ways. These include the fixed costs or what it costs for you to have the doors open like payroll, rent, mortgage payments, insurance, debt repayment, interest, and taxes. Money also leaves your practice in the form of variable costs. These are the incremental costs of doing business with each encounter or use, such as overtime, outsourcing payments, disposables, utilities, non-capital equipment, and bonuses. So what numbers do you really need to monitor daily, weekly, quarterly, and yearly if you want to know 
what your cash flow is doing. And if you want to find out if you're in a positive cash flow state or in a negative cash flow state. And a positive cash flow state means more money coming in than going out. In a medical practice, the key performance indicators or KPIs that you want to monitor daily are the following 10. I know 10 sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It'll easily fit on a spreadsheet for you. And you'll figure out a really super easy way to do it for yourself so you can keep track of it every day on your phone. So the first KPI or key performance indicator to follow is called net receipts. The net receipts, that's the money that you actually are paid for the products and services you provide minus any refunds. And this is what gives you money to pay your bills and keep your office open. It must be monitored daily. Failure to do so will result in practice decline and eventual failure. You must monitor net receipts. Gross receipts don't mean so much. Net receipts mean everything. The second key performance indicator to follow is charges. Charges are the money you bill for products or services. This is the amount that in an ideal world, you would receive every time you provide the product or service. Now realize that in a mixed payer practice setting where some patients have no insurance, others have government subsidized insurance, and others have private insurance, the gross charges will not at all be reflective of what you'll be able to collect, but that's okay. Your job is to make sure you're charging a price that reflects the minimum value your patient or client receives from your product or service. Then make sure you strive to provide 20 times that value to them every single time they visit. So while following gross charges alone is of little practical value, following the metric over time helps you measure the volume and value of service that you provide to your patients or clients. The number three key performance indicator to follow is accounts receivable, or you'll hear it called AR. How you manage your AR determines how much stress the business of your practice puts on you and the other partners. Accounts receivable is simply the charges minus the receipts. Yet the linchpin of managing this number is understanding the time value of money. Now, what that means, the time value of money, it means that the longer the person you sold the services to holds on to what is now your money that they should be paying you for those services, the more that money declines in value. In traditional businesses, the decline rate in the value of the money is 10% in two months, 50% in six months, and about 95% at two years. Yet this rate of decline has proven much steeper in healthcare dollars. So the important take-home point is you must aggressively manage the aging of your accounts receivable. This is no time to be shy. Call patients or clients who owe you money personally. I can tell you firsthand, it works. The fourth key performance indicator to follow is days in accounts receivable. This can be calculated several ways. A good way for private practice is to have your days in accounts receivable be equal to your net accounts receivable divided by the average daily receipts. So that's like take a quarter's worth of receipts, one quarter of the year worth of receipts, and divide that by 90. This lets you know how efficient your billings and collections process is working. A general rule of thumb is that if you see this indicator declining over three to five days, it's time to find out why your cash collections are falling behind. Closely related to days and accounts receivable is the fifth key performance indicator that you should follow, charge lag, or the average difference between the date of service and the date of charge posts. Your goal here is zero. Charge, post that charge the same day those services are delivered. Now, if you're a cash-based practice, you won't need to bother with the next key performance indicator. Yet, just in case you find yourself dealing with organizations that rely on insurance or government payment sources, let's review the number six key performance indicator. Denials. A denial is what happens when a claim you file for reimbursement with a payer is denied. There are five really common causes of denials. The first is eligibility errors with either incorrect or incomplete insurance information. The second is failure of timely filing. The third, incomplete or lack of specificity in your coding. The fourth, failure to obtain pre-authorization that was required. The fifth, bundled services that cannot be unbundled. And then just throwing in one for Lanyap here, the lack of medical documentation to support authorization. So those are the common causes of denials. And denials are something you definitely need to follow uh, if you're accepting insurance. 
The number seven key performance indicator to follow is payables. These are bills you have to pay. So what payroll, taxes, and invoices you must pay, and what are their due dates? The number eight key performance indicator to follow is appointments. Track your number of filled and unfilled appointments and your cancellations and reschedule rates weekly so that you know where you have growth capacity or opportunity to tighten up ship. The ninth key performance indicator to follow is RVUs, relative value units, or some other objective measure of professional productivity. Now, if you're a doctor, you must understand and track your RVUs. RVUs are the relative value units that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services developed to quantify the relative value of any given CPT code. What is, here's the bonus question, what does CPT stand for? So most private and government payers use the RVU in factoring payments that they provide to doctors and corporations for services rendered. Inside your practice, RVUs are an imperfect, yet equitable way to measure physician productivity. By following the way the RVU numbers are trending, you're able to assess a physician's productivity and compare it to other metrics like the gross charges. So the bonus question again was, what does CPT stand for? You can go to thedoctorsminner.com, enter your answer for an incredible drawing. So the last, the number 10 key performance indicator that you should track religiously is overhead. Keeping your overhead costs to a minimum means more money for growth of the business and take-home pay for the owners. Now, in our next episode, we'll cover some simple steps you can take to keep your overhead extremely low without feeling like a pauper. So let's wrap this up. Do you want to feed your practice or bleed your practice? If you want to feed it, you must understand what two words? Well, I, I can't hear you. That's right, cash flow. And how do you monitor cash flow? We've talked about 10 key performance indicators that let you know right away how money is flowing in and out of your practice. So what are your action steps moving forward? Your next step. Number one, review the products and services you offer or want to offer. Number two, assign a charge to each that reflects the minimum value of what someone will receive if they buy your product or service, not the minimum that a payer is willing to reimburse you for providing the service. Then, strive to provide value to your clients and patients that is 20 times what that charge is. And finally, number three, figure out an easy way to display these 10 key performance indicators so you can review them daily, weekly, quarterly, and yearly. Make this a habit now, and when your practice is in full swing, you will be so happy you did. Don't forget to go to thedoctorsminner.com and answer that bonus question that I asked earlier. One lucky person who submits their answer will receive a really cool prize that has to do directly with the cash flow equation in your practice. What? You don't remember the question? Go back to the ninth key performance indicator, RVUs to find that out. See you next time. I'm Lori Barr, the doctor's mentor. There's more to explore at the doctorsmentor.com. So the bonus question again was, what does CPT stand for? You can go to the doctorsmentor.com, enter your answer for an incredible drawing. Are you stopping at a hospital? Hello? Don't you know that hospitals are one of the sickest places on the planet? Don't touch anything in there and get out as fast as you can. 